It's the best hood channel on YouTube. Rap news, street politics, and we back with volume two of the current state of gangbanging in Los Angeles, the Crips though. Now for everybody that saw volume one, you see what we doing. You see how we coming with this. We got neighborhood Crips, gangster Crips, hustler Crips, podcast Crips, party Crips. They all gonna be touched on in this series, man. Like we said in volume one, it's some real dudes that's representing that Crip and right in LA. And there's a lot of dudes that's failing at representing that cripping. They're not up to par. And we come in the same way. We're going to be talking about dudes' reputation, activity, and impact in the streets when representing their hood. Now to jump this list off, we starting with a gangster crip out of Long Beach. Savi Third from Baby Insane. Nigga, so what? So what? Yeah. So what? Hey, really nothing you can tell me about I've been in this. Can lady pop it like a nigga when he been a bitch? Dude just started contributing a bill of I've been breathing on these niggas as they tripping, yeah. Pop two and white your bow, is you feeling that? Doing a whole lot of crying, is you drilling, yeah? We be throwing signs, they know what it means. He ain't one of mines, he ain't chunk of three. Now, Savi Third is somebody who been on the scene for a long time. And since he got out from his bid a couple years ago, Savi really been applying pressure in the rap game. But like we said, man, the rapping is not indicative of how these dudes is cripping. But Savi represent Baby Insane to the fullest. We see that time and time and again. Man, Savi has been deemed to be so aggressive that dudes was even saying he was on that Scante, man. They were saying he was messing around smoking that shit, but... I don't think that's the case, man. I think Savi is just a real aggressive member from his hood, and he and he put it down like that. Now, something that we saw when he got out is him explaining this situation with, with WAC 100 and basically how he was in the situation with Cash Money West, the same as Blueface, and his jail stint kind of derailed his career. You know what I'm saying? With music. And uh, we, we seen what happened. We seen how Blueface bubbled up with WAC 100 and became that, you know, that uh, whatever you want to call him in L.A. as a rapper. Savi Third went down and kind of had to find his footing when he got out of jail. But um, most recently, we seen him at No Jumper with WAC 100. And man, Savi is, is displaying exactly what we want to see from gangsters that go on these podcasts, that go on these social media platforms and have to present they sell. Now, I think Savi got a chip on the shoulder for one because of that situation I just explained. But starting off, when we seen Adam ask him about that little meth situation, we seen Savi get up on Adam about that. And, and then not not no playing games, not no laughing, not no letting, letting Adam do whatever he want to do with him. You know what I'm saying? He nipped that shit right in the bud. And then he began to control the interview, so to speak. If you pay attention to how Whacking Adam was treating him utmost respect. They not playing no games, which is the complete opposite of what they do to a lot of people on that podcast. A great example of that was how they did Savvy counterpart DW Flame when, when he was in the chair when it was just whacking Adam. He was slithered. They was playing with him, joking. They was, you know, it was none of that with Savvy. And I see it's because Savvy is really standing on business. We didn't see whack try to correct Adam about how he coming at Savvy. We seen Adam try to talk about that DW Flame Brick Baby situation with Savvy. What did Savvy say? He basically insinuated that he calling a cigarette the same thing as DW Flame did. Amidst all the bullshit, you know, a lot of dudes would, would try to dodge that and, and play around it because it's a lot of fuel to that fire right now. The neighborhoods is up. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, it's really just been DW Flame trying to defend itself on that. So Savi Third went and said, hey, this is what it is. And he stood on that gangster crib business and didn't let the social media platform bleed him out, so to speak. But in, in all, man, when we talk about activity, we just explained Savi's clearly been active. He went down on his cases, kept it solid, no paperwork, no games being played and not letting dudes play with him. Standing on that true gangster crib business. Great representation coming out the city of Long Beach. 
we give him Savi third and eight. He putting it down, no smut on his name, standing on business, staying silent. Now the next dude we gonna touch on is a guy that we didn't talked a lot about on this channel. It's a dude that everybody know about. He done been a meme in, in so many different situations. He done been everywhere. Right now he locked down, but we got Baby Crip Man from 5-5 five five Neighborhood Crip. Now, C-Mac, man, he, he been all over the place. You know, we, we done watched this dude really grow on the internet into, into somebody that most motherfuckers fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Aside from his enemies, of course. But it's a lot of making fun of C-Mac and how he crip. You know, a lot of people see it as him being burnt out. And, and, and low-key, that's agreeable. You know what I'm saying? He is kind of burnt out with the shit. But one thing's for sure. He stand on that business, man. Regardless of how he look, how he act, and what motherfuckers think about him, he stands on that business. And that was very apparent through his jail stints. Number one, one notable thing that carried over from the streets to jail for him was that fade with Jap 5. And that's what everybody wanted to see. And he kept it solid. He kept it real. Jap 5 put the paws on him. And he did what he was supposed to do with that shit on his forehead. So we clear that up. So it, I realized why Cut didn't want to fight Jap and he didn't want to take no back fades on Neighborhood Crip. So I'm on the ground on Neighborhood Crip. I'm looking for Cut on Hood. Like Cut, because pretty much Cut and County Jail Cup, there's a homie right there on Neighborhood Crip. Cut, they're going to take a back fade, Cut, or they're not going to let a nigga fire on you on the ground. You fight me? Oh, this is I fall. I'm trying to get up. Jack not letting me up the whole car on neighborhood crib. And I realized, cuz, don't only know boxing, cuz, also know that UFC shit. Oh, neighborhood crib, cuz, fire me, fire me, fire me. I'm like, oh, cuz. Oh, neighborhood crib, cuz, keep fire on me on hood. Then as soon as I get up, this motherfucker gonna tell me, you ain't no real Hoover killer. That's when we got out again. We went back and fifth, back and fifth in the corner. And that's when it stopped, after it stopped. I said, God damn, I said, on oh, neighborhood crib, you hit hard, Jap. I ain't even gonna lie. It was like a Tyler hitting me in the motherfucking face with a hammer. I'm gonna keep it 55th Street with you. And, I, and he showed me his golden glove boxing things on his, on his leg. I'm like, damn, on hood. We also seen him when he went down prior to that situation, when he got down with some more of his enemies from Brims. Hence the reason why he's missing a tooth. All hustlers are running by Brazy from Brims. All hustlers, I'm going to keep it 55th Street with you. An uh, older big nigga on hood, cut the 15 upstate on hood. Now he down here right now. On hustlers fighting another hot. Right, I'm 6'2", 270 on hustlers. You fight me, cuz bigger than me on hustlers, but more muscle on hood, cuz 6'4", 320 maybe 340 on swole. On hustlers, he see me. He see I got eye busters, I got whack outs on hood. I'm a nigga, I'm somebody from my hood on hood, you find me? He see me, he's like, oh yeah, where you from? That's just how it is in the county. Nigga see your tattoo, they just gonna ask where you from to see if you gonna say it or not. On Hustus, I tell her, on hood, just like this. I'm Baby Crip Mac. I'm Hoover Killer Destruction from Five Side Crip. He told me, say on West Side Brims, we gonna get in. So how CCB go, everybody get up out your sway on Hustus. And y'all get down. We get down. On Hustus, I go a good good round with him on Hustus. Cud drop me. I keep it 50 fair straight. I get up. I squabble again on Hustus. Cud catch me with a hard ass right and knock that tooth out in the middle right there on Hood. Now, the key thing is you're not just getting a high grade just because you're so ready to crash out. Remember, activity, impact, and reputation. His reputation, man, is, is not the best. Some of them burnt out activities have kind of made his cripping look like a joke. His cripping look like a gimmick. And he's put himself in certain situations to make the world look at cripping as, you know, just something fun to do. You know, it's, 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 it's something to play with. And it's really not, though, you know. But aside from that, he really has put 5-5 five, five on the map, man. Being from the city, we know what's over there in the 50s. We know starting, starting from 51st. 52nd, 59th, 55th, 57th, 58th, 
we know what's over there, but that's not a hood that a lot of people really talk about or is really out there for people to know. So when C-Mac brought that out, he really put them dudes on the map, man. And, and that's that's very impactful for their hood. You know, now, just to be honest, that boosts their recruitment. You know what I'm saying? That, that This is how the shit starts. You know what I'm saying? Whether, whether young kids and shit see him as a gimmick or not, it's not that we're going to glorify, you know, young kids jumping into this lifestyle. But we have to touch on the fact of the matter. When the hood is out there more to people, you know what I'm saying? When they when they can touch it, when it's tangible, aside from their family being from there, they gravitate to it. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's going to touch on the impact that C-Mac has had for his hood. He's put them on the map. But, you know, it's countless situations with Crip Mac where he has stayed solid, man. We've seen him on his cases. He ain't never snitched on nobody in this case. He ain't PC'd up in the county. He's catching all his fades, and he's doing what he's supposed to do as a neighborhood crypto. But I think what outweighs that, sadly enough, is how he makes the cripping look. You know, not everybody's going to pay attention to the fades and, you know, keeping it solid. The first thing we all think when we think of Crip Mac is the gimmick of Crippin'. And this, this is why C-Mac got to get a C, man, because he's really put the gimmick in Crippin'. Just like in Value 1 when we touched on Blueface. You know, he ran into Blueface. It was a quote from their interaction where they saying, hey, same rag. We on the same side. It's all cool, man. It ain't never been like that. Certain Crips beef with certain Crips. And if it's beef, it's supposed to go up. It ain't no peace treat just because y'all in the setting or y'all ain't feeling like getting down or whatever the case is. In that instance... That was some bunk shit. Now, that could have just been Blueface. It was Blueface that made that statement. But as soon as they left that equation, both of them was beefing online. So, you know, you can't bring this playfulness into this cripping while you're publicly representing this shit. You know what I'm saying? And C-Mac has done a lot of that. So that's why the C is on C-Mac. Now, moving on out of the five fives, we got to go to the hunters. And if y'all didn't watch that value one of this, y'all go check that out. But remember, we putting the Hoovers on this list of Crips, man. The 107 Salos, the OG homie said they was back Crips. We all seen it. Jap 5 up next, 107 Hoover. Look, I'm gang sliding with the gang sliders. And all my niggas sliding with me with the gang violence. Clip hanging out the Glock like it's hang gliding. Gang product, when it come to popping, I'm the main top. Huh? I'm gang sliding with the gang sliders. And all my niggas sliding with me with the gang violence. Clip hanging out the Glock like it's hang gliding. Gang product, when it come to popping, I'm the main top. Love. Now, Jap 5, man, has really been an outstanding member from this shit. You know, he really been putting it on for his hood. He represented Nice Gang to the fullest. And we most recently keep getting confirmation of him doing that work behind them walls against his enemies. You know what I'm saying? He taking them phase. He not PCing up. Now, it did come out that he was on the 50-50 yard. I can't say too much from that. I know some dudes said it. Cartoon 5 Trey, he spoke on it. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like up in the air as to why that is. But the key thing is, Jap has proven to us that he's not scared of these fades. We didn't see Fo Extra win, lose, or draw. Fo Extra said he put the pause on Jap 5. Jap 5 put the pause on C-Mac. It's nothing new to see Jap 5 putting in work behind them walls. So that's we're not going to put that in question. We already know that shit stick. Now on the streets, we seen Jap 5 when he got out from that last bit. He got to the rap and he got with it. He was doing this shit. He was still a major impact and laying heavy politics in his hood. Remember that situation when the uh when them dudes was beating up the Elote man and robbing the Elote man? Okay, so why was it important for you to kind of get involved and you know reprimand your homies? Well, honestly, like I guess they tagged me in a video, so it brought a lot of attention to me. I guess people in the video thought that I had a part of it. Mm -hmm. So with them thinking I had a part of the video, they start targeting me with death mm -hmm. threats and all type of crazy. With all type of crazy stuff and disrespect. Right. So, with that being said, I kind of like wanted to clear my name up. I kind of was like enraged mm. about the fact that they used my name right. to tag and got this attention on me. So, what I did, I went to go get my name cleared up. I had a problem with them. 
put in my name on a video, so I mm -hmm. know what I have to do. Mm -hmm. But my reason for posting it on the internet was to show you feel me, my Latin race and everyone around me that, like, you feel me, that, that there was consequences for their actions. Right. Like that. That was a young man from Hoover. Who served that DP up? Jap Fi did. He's a factor for the H gang. Well respected member from Hoover. Now it's said that he's supposed to be coming home soon. We all looking forward to that. Like I said, he was doing his rapping before he went in. It started to pick up. We want to see him pick back up on that. But one thing's for sure, we can expect Jap Fi to stand on business and stand on his hood politics and represent that H gang to the fullest. And we'd also seen Jap rolling with his other Hoover counterparts, some dudes that we're going to touch on in this video and later, dudes like Young Threat, Treyway 6K, Pope. He's hanging around reputable members and he putting in work. It's no surprise that Jap 5, 107 Salo, get that A on this list, man. He really putting it down and he should be home soon. Now we're going to bounce out the Salos, coming back down to the 60s. We touching on the guy, man that really is baffling out here in these streets. And I'ma just say, horrible representation for his set. I call him Snitch Honey, but everybody know, 600, supposedly from Rolling 60 neighborhood crib. Hello? Christopher. What's, what's up, man, what's going on? This is Officer Johnson. I just wanted to let you know the, the fellas over at the station have a little something for you. Like, what you mean? We got a little gift for you. Why don't you come by? All right. Come by the station. All right, bet. All right. Ten, I'll be ten, there. 10 four. All right. Let me say something else. There's nothing wrong with people, you know, changing their life, you know, going to work for the LAPD. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when you want to accept it, when you want to embrace it, when you're in the closet about it, you know, I mean, who wants to be gangbanging all their life? <laughs> yeah. Come play with me now. Now, we just put a video out on 600, man, and we had to really highlight the flaws in this dude's character and his cripping. Some of them things, man, just really rub niggas the wrong way with that dude cripping. The police activity. Go watch that video we did. We're not going to go too far into detail with this shit on this. But this nigga and the police, he playing with the police. This is not what this crippling is about, man. This is the worst representation we could see. And like we said in volume one, man, the rolling 60s are currently in a divide in their hood. Like we continue to say, that's a big hood over there. They got multiple sides. And beefing internally is nothing new, not only to this hood, but most hoods in the city, man. It's just normal. But right now, the 60s are involved in a true public divide in their hood, man. And it's sad to see for the state of gangbanging, period, along with the state of cripping. But it's dudes like 600, man, that just double down on the bullshit with making this cripping look bad. It, it's something the way this dude carry himself that you just know he not cut from this cloth. But he walking around here like he's about to be the new OG of the hood. We seen Don Bonelli tell him that's not the case. He's not the big homie from the hood. He don't run it, but he portrays different on his YouTube channel, on his Instagram. This dude really kind of acting like the new Suge Knight in this motherfucker. He want to be this new industry mogul and shit. He fuck with dudes that this is hood. Listen, he fucks with dudes that this is hood. Out here, nigga, bust down. You see where I'm at? Hey, fuck Brick Baby on his damn, you nigga. You gonna push up your hood? Shit green, nigga. That shit green, nigga. On me, nigga. Nigga, so I can't pull up to the hood. I'm down as I pull up to your hood. Nigga, thirsty, nigga. And we out here, nigga. And we out here, nigga. Niggas get gunned down, nigga. Where niggas at? You see what they trying to do to Brick Baby over the small situation that happened between him and DW. A situation that can be ironed out extremely quick. They blew this motherfucker up. But I don't know if it's because of this dude's size, his box and all that shit, why he's not getting swiftly handled with the DP, with the check. Why is everybody not going on him like they go at Brick Baby? Is it because Brick Baby on the drugs? I don't know, but 600 continues to show us that he really ain't cripping. 
He, he's using the Crippin as a leverage over the streets to move around in this entertainment industry. He dissing his big homies. We don't see that nigga guiding the little homies if he really is a big homie over there. We don't see him guiding his own homies. But again, like we said, he's not the big homie over there. And like I said prior, man, I've personally seen niggas from 60s just because of who they know or who they people is fuck up with paperwork in the streets or whatever and still be allowed to kick it over there. Look at the situation that happened with Nipsey Hussle. The nigga that killed him was a so-called snitch. Now, every hood gonna have some snitches, man, but this is becoming a common factor over here. We talked about 600's paperwork, his Riverside County paperwork. That compared to the video that he put out about the paperwork, there was some shit that just didn't make sense. Some shit was off. That's not snitch paperwork like we put out on G-Face, but when he told the story about the paperwork, shit was just off. Nonetheless, we don't see any activity. The most activity we seen in him game banging was his 40 year old ass tagging in the alley. He got checked about his impact in the hood when Don Bonelli and them real crips, whether it be on Burnhurst, on a dime block, wherever, over in the 60s, called him out and said, he not one of these guys over here. His name don't hold weight. Impact is not there. Activity's not there. And this reputation, man, is fucked off. He beefing with the young homies, beefing with the older homies. 600 F for this crippy man. He gets an F. This, this, he need to hang this shit up and pick them gloves up. Stay with boxing. Get out the streets, nigga. We got to jump outside of the west side right now. We got to leave South Central, man. And we got to go southeast. We got to come to Watts. We got to hit the Jordan Down Projects. We coming to 03 Greedo, man. Now, 03 Greedo been buzzing in the streets. He been had his name in the streets. He been putting on for great. 03 Greedo, man. Grape Street Watts. Baby Low Crip. Know the difference. I don't even sound like me, but you sound like the old me. Calling me a clone, they like that ain't even no three. And I miss the pandemic and the PDB. Turn up in the tertiary, I order real VV. It's a 10 train, greedy, keep it TCD. Make some extra drug deals, how I eat DD. Yeah, it with the cooler, and it's your medulla. Still a sticky drama, screaming recipes, the ruler. Party bum, me niggas dropping baddies with the bad. Now, Grape Street is a is a is a huge hood, man. Storied hood. Everybody know about the Jordan Downs. Very reputable section of the city. Not one to play in. Y'all go watch our most dangerous gangs and watch, man, and see if that's the section that y'all fucking with. You know what I'm saying? But on some recent shit, O3 Greedo took his case, and I think he took his case in Texas. He stayed down, did his bid. It wasn't until he got out that some things started circulating about paperwork. And a common place that this paperwork gets brought to is no jumper. We seen Greedo come with his alleged co-defendant or the person that he went down with. I don't know if the nigga got a case or not, but the person that he went down with came with Greedo to no jumper. And they, they went there to kind of clean up what the rumors was about this paperwork. Now, the paperwork has stated something that I found interesting. You know what I'm saying? Was the fact that O3 Greedo kind of threw his mans up under the bus. He kind of was like, hey, I don't know what this nigga did. It's on him. The, the shit was funny style. We can't fully say that O3 Greedo then pent the case on dude. Greedo did his time. Like I said, I don't know if the other dude did time. But with that paperwork, man, Throwing the homie up under the bus in any situation when y'all flocking, y'all sliding, when y'all when, when niggas is moving around together, period. Come on. You can't throw the homie under the bus. And the key thing, man, like we continue to say, why the fuck you niggas keep talking to the police? Why the fuck you ain't lawyered up? All these niggas with paperwork that we talk about on this channel, man, these niggas be rolling with the foreigns, chains, clothes. But the last thing motherfuckers think about is lawyering the fuck up, shutting the fuck up, and not talking to the police. Niggas should have a lawyer on retainer. The first thing a good lawyer gonna tell you, hey, what's the number one rule? Don't talk to the police. What's the number two rule? Don't talk to the police. I can't fucking help you if you talk to the police. Where is that at? Then there would be no paperwork. There would be no statements made. Now, prior to the situation, 
Greedo's reputation was extremely strong, man. Like I said, really putting on for the city, really putting on for Grape Street. And he's been a factor in his hood for a really long time. Impact-wise, it's excellent, man. A reputable member from Grape. But man, throwing your homie up under the bus in the paperwork, it's not going to cut it. But in all, we got to give Greedo a beat, man. He didn't snitch on the homie. He didn't, you know, he didn't send a nigga up the river. He did his time. Represent for the city. 03 Greedo got a beat, man. Now, bagging up out of Watts, man, we, we still got to come down here and talk about somebody else that's on this list. But this is a dude, man, out of West L.A. that I've personally been wanting to talk about for a long time, man. I've, I've been personally wanting to touch on this dude's cripping for a very long time. When we thought about this shit, oh, this is perfect. Because I, I really didn't know if dude deserved his own video. But, man, I'm talking about nobody other than Yellow Hill from Marvin Gangsta Crip. Some may say Marvin Avenue Gangsta Crip. West L.A. Trey Gang. And all of that money that we be getting, it got your bitch talking. Ain't talking that KFC, my nigga, but look, I be strip talking. When I be tripping up on the mic, sometimes that's nip talking. And when I came up out the wall, look, I was crip walking, crip talking. Like it's blue spit in my mouth, nigga. Hiding the burner up under the bed or under the couch, nigga. Can't come around the hood and use a mouse, nigga. No snitches, no buses, fuck the clout, nigga. Yeah, I know that I'm... Now, Yellow Hill being from Marvin's, man, Marvin's is not like a hood that everybody gonna hear about. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a 6-0, not like a Grape Street, not like a Hoover, but they a reputable hood in West LA, a part of that Trey Gang card. And most of the hoods in West LA is gonna be a part of the three. But man, it's a term that went along with Yellow Hill and his cripping, man. And, and that term is Disney Channel cripping, man. It's friendly cripping. Not saying everybody got to be a crash out artist or nothing like that, or, or niggas got to be extra out or burnt out. That's not the case. But something that really stuck out from Yellow Hill was when he spoke about his DP. And man, this shit just reverberates through the airways. It's going to do this shit forever. It's forever going to be etched in everybody's mind why this nigga got a DP. Like I said, Yellow Hill from Marvin's. These just Trey Gangsters. Historically, the majority of Trey Gangs is going to beef with neighborhood Crips. And that is the case for the Marvins. But Yellow Hill took it upon itself when Nipsey Hussle died to get a tattoo of the face of the neighborhood Crips on his body. Now, I know some of y'all may be like, oh, okay, you know, he's just an artist, just whatever. It's Nipsey Hussle. You know, Nipsey Hussle like the new Jesus to motherfuckers these days. And when he died, it was some other shit. But Yellow Hill must have felt the same way. So he go back to his GC hood and show his homies. Like, hey, man, I just got neighborhood tatted. <laughs> I got neighborhood tatted on me. He said them niggas proceeded to put the paws on him. My thing is, it's like, is somebody like Yellow Hill's handler? It's like his people, the OG homie from the hood, that just gave him the pass to push the hood, push the line, and use that as leverage for his rap career. Because any motherfucker should know, putting an enemigo face tatted on your motherfucking body is basically tatting a motherfucking hood on you. That's like C-Mac getting the tattoo face of Jap 5. What the fuck is that? How wasn't this common knowledge as a gangster crip, as a reputable gangster crip, that this is not some shit that you should do? And man, the niggas that DP'd him, I'm sure a lot of homies in that hood still look at this nigga sideways like, what the fuck the homie on? That's the Disneyland cripping. Playing with this cripping. Friendly with this shit. Don't make sense with this shit. We don't see Yellow Hill pressing the line. He had a situation where him and Big Sad was beefing. Hey, Alejandro, man. Why you got everybody looking at us like we weird, man? Because, like, we DP'd you for a Nipsey tattoo. Why you lying in the No Jumper interview, man? Yeah, now I gotta spank your ass, kid. You joined that 28, nigga, tell the truth, nigga. Look. Hey, why you mad? Because you joined that 28. You threw your jerk and fit away for some khakis, but you late. Then you lied about the DP with Hustle Man the Great. Got some more shit on this peon, so just wait. Alex, you went to Herbert Hoover High School. You want the image of a gangster? You a nice dude. You ain't been to jail? Who the fuck you lying to? You got put on by a kid. You ain't want to fight, fool. Lying in your... 
No, I believe the Marvins and the PBGs is cool. They both West LA Trey gang. I can't say what their current relationship is like now, but I heard that was the thing between him and Big Sad, and I can see why. You seen what we said about Sad in Volume 1, representing them West LA Trey gangs. This shit is off the wall. What Yellow Hill is looking like in terms of his representation. We never hear about that nigga putting it down. It's not an arguable fact that he has no impact in his hood. The Marvins is going to be the Marvins with or without this dude. And the reputation as a Disney Crip is not the representation the gangster Crips want to have. This shit look bad. But in all, keeping it even, keeping it 100. Yellow Hill ain't had no smut on his name like others. We don't see Yellow Hill with no paperwork. Could it be because he not even in the streets like that? Possibly. But still, he don't have any paperwork. This is why Yellow Hill gets a motherfucking D. D grade Crippin. It's not going to pass. Now, moving away from the gangsters on the west side, man. We got to come back to the middle part of the city. We going back to the H gang. Representing that A Trey Hoover. We got Treyway 6K. Hey, if you ain't gang, you can't hang with us. I only kick it with savage niggas and real killers. Put me in, coach. I'm trying to slide too. Try to slide too. If you ain't gang, you can't hang with us. I only kick it with savage niggas and real killers. Put me in, coach. I'm trying to slide too. Try to slide too. I'm a nigga in this. Now, all y'all know, Treyway is currently locked down behind them walls, as a lot of members are right now. But when he was out, man, Treyway was on a fast course to crashing out. Young nigga came out representing Hoover hard on the social media platforms. This was like another golden era for the Hoovers, man, where you had Jap 5, Threat, Jay Heartless, Treyway, Pope, and rest in peace, T-Super, all these dudes was coming with some bangers out the hoovers. Everybody was out, full fledged representing, and it was cracking for them. Now, Treyway made a name for himself as a young dude that's trying to rap, but still full fledged, 10 toes in the streets. We done seen him multiple times, perving on the internet, looking for the main streets. One notable situation, man, we caught him with Block Crip, Tunchi 5, in front of the courthouse waiting for the fade, trying to catch the fade, wanting to catch the fade in the midst of handling this court case. In the same breath, turned around and caught the fade with the Harlems at the courthouse. Young shit, man. Five, he's a bitch, five. He's a bitch, five. Shut up, bitch. Hey, Trey, who's Shut up, bitch. Shut up, bitch. Dead homie, shut up. The young representation of the Hoovers, that's what we want to see, man. But, but the key thing is, a little too much on the internet with it. A lot of the shit he was doing, we had a front row seat to watch that shit. And that's why it comes as no surprise that he's behind them walls right now, man. A lot of shit he was doing, he was displaying on Front Street. Now, he, he seemed to have some solid impact in his hood. Seemed to have some respect. Definitely had that activity. But throwing everything online, man, he's opening the door to set itself up for even longer stints, longer rides in prison. Now, you know, this for all the niggas out there, man, all the Crips, the Bloods, Pyrus, whoever, man, you can do your shit without the internet. You can put in work without everybody having to know. You can raise your value by not being seen so motherfucking much trying to crash out. This shit not be heard about one way or another, man. We know the streets talk. That ain't nothing new. But you ain't got to turn your real life into a movie all the time, man. And, and that's what Treyway was doing. But in all, man, he still looked like a dude that was running his program and was leading his homies in his age group, his generation, man, in the way they should be led being from Hoover. Now, we recently seen he got his cell phone popping in prison, man. He doing his shit. He not rolling it up. He didn't caught his face. He didn't PC up. And he going to be home soon. No smut on his name, no paperwork, no bullshit. This is what we want to see from the young life, man. But tone the internet presence down a little bit with them activities. We're going to hear about it. We, the streets going to know. 
But the whole world ain't got to, you know what I'm saying? The whole world ain't got to see that motherfucker. The reputation going to poke out, man. So with that, man, we want to see Trey Wade move a little better in the streets, be a little bit more militant. We see he ready to, he ready to rock. And with that being said, we got to give Trey Wade an A, man. Just tighten the shit up just a little bit more, man. Tighten it up. He putting it down. He pushing that line for his hood. Trey Wade got an A. Now, a dude that we touched on who's had a run in with Trey Wade. Again, at the courthouse. A guy that we haven't heard from for a long time with the music, man. And he was starting to bubble up with Snoopy Harvard, Flame Gang Uzi, the original Block Crip, 25. From the hundreds, though. Bitch, I'm really in the field, I ain't taking no other route I'm sliding through the hoochies, if I see them, I'm jumping out My mind on the million, I don't know what they be talking about My niggas train to kill for that dope, we gon' talk them out All gas, no brakes, shit, that must wanna hate shit Now back to the basics, talk, talk, get your face bit Don't fuck with no fake shit, don't got it, I take it Blue fame is the gang, bitch, we stay on some gang shit And I ain't gon' change shit Now like I said, man, Tunchi was really starting to come with that shit, man He's had a couple bangers, man, that could have really uplifted his career in rapping. But I think he's a cold case of, man, when niggas just want a game bang. Fuck that rapping shit. He don't do too many interviews. We didn't see him on No Jumper with Adam. But we don't see this dude that much in the industry. So it's tough to say if he's, if he's a rapper or if he's just a gang member. I'm leaning towards just a street nigga, just a gang member. You know what I'm saying? Unless he come out with another banger, that's what he gonna be labeled as. Oh, look at that. Man, that nigga chained the fuck out. Oh, that's the nigga Tochi from Clark from the game. Where are you from? That's the nigga Tochi from Clark. Blood got a hook. Blood got a black. That's not changed. No, that's the nigga Tochi. No, bro. Blood got a strap on the damn homies. I saw Tony in the street. Blood is gonna bust. Blood on a regular ass crab, bro. On Bloods. Nigga on the set. Blood is gonna spark. Nigga on the dead homies, nigga. But Tochi is definitely known as somebody who pushing that line for his hood. And that's notable in his song, Not a Regular Crab. When them dudes from 20s was talking about him when they ran up on him. Now, we didn't see Munchie B said the dude that said that from 20s got DP because he showed some sort of fear for Tucci Fi. He didn't want to run up on Tucci Fi. Hence the name of the song, Not a Regular Crab. West now, buddy, sir, lay me a shooter. I am not a regular crab, so you know that I'm a shooter. Chase a nigga down your block. I ain't missing 30 shots. Make a nigga do a flip, knock a nigga out of shot. Bitch, I'm really with the gang, gang on BF, my gun bang. You wanna see a dead body and follow me? I know the way we do this shit like every day on Love Flame is too easy. Pull up, hop it out, give it up, that's on me. Won't let my nigga up. Tunchi is in the mix with all them niggas, man. Them niggas that we see. We touched on Don Bonelli. We seen him with Baby JM from Main Street. Like I said, Flame Gang Uzi, Snoopy Harvard, Dollar Bill, rest in peace. And the original Block Crip in the hundreds, what's known as Westmont, that hood is not for play. But the, the key thing is, man, when we touched on Treyway, we touched briefly on how he ran into Tunchi Five at the courthouse. Now, I don't know what type of legal battles Tunchi Five was, was fighting at the time, but Treyway was with all the action, man. And the way Tunchi Five put it, he's HK to the fullest, man. It ain't nothing else. That's all they looking for is some hoovers. And it seemed like he found them at the courthouse. But like we touched on that big U video, man, Tunchi Five had the, had the uh, pooty face, man. He, he didn't get out there. And, you know, motherfuckers, there is no excuse when motherfuckers say, hey, you know, we seen the... Uh, we seen them at the courthouse. Hey, man, they at the courthouse. Let it chill, man. We just told y'all, Treyway just got down with them niggas from 30s at the courthouse. Certain level, man, it's like, we got to catch this fade. And the way Tucci be talking, man, he was supposed to catch that fade. Now, we know he's revered as a gunner from his hood, a nigga that got it on him. He not for play. He really be with them real members. We know that. But again, man, if it's displayed for a public view on the internet, it's going to be judged. If you put it out for us to see, for the world to see, there's going to be opinions formed about it. There's a track record from everything motherfuckers put on that internet, man. And I will say, there was opportunity for Tunchi 5 to show activity. And it wasn't shown, man. So at this time, man, we're going to have to give Tunchi 5 a beat for that. Because of all the shit that's been talking in the record and that one situation, man, it's similar to when the Baby Stones got ran up on in court by the niggas from Harlem. There was no action. Tunchi 5 with the B. 
Now, dude whose hood is not going to be far from uh, Block Crip, Westmont, the Salos, a dude that has kept his reputation clean since he stepped in this shit. Stay solid, stay even with this shit. 11 Dukes Broadway Gangster Crip, G Perico. So we're on the corner of 108th and Broadway. Like this used to be like one of the most violent areas in the hood, like these corners right here and then this block right here, like the 10 8 Motel, like even my homies, like a lot of homies from my hood were scared to come down here, you know what I'm saying? Now, like I said, man, G Perico is very even killed with this shit. Consistent with the rapping, consistent with his reputation from being from 11 News Broadway. Absolutely no smut, man. He didn't took cases, no paperwork. And what I see, everybody gives him all around respect. He not a party crip. He not a Disneyland crip. Not necessarily a friendly crip. We don't never see him really have to get aggressive with nobody. Because like I said, man, he gets respect in the city. His hood is active. Hood is reputable. Between the five deuces and the 11 deuces, the hood is reputable. And with that being said, man, we have to do nothing but respect this type of crip. We don't see him putting a bunch of politics about his hood or his his actions on the internet, man. We don't see it. And not saying G Perico is like a super gunner from his hood. You know, like I said, everybody play a different role in the hood. It seemed like G Perico has played his role for the Broadways and the Crippin has rewarded him with the respect in the city, man. I, re I really genuinely have uh, nothing nothing bad to say about G Perico. This is, this is what I feel like Crippin is supposed to be, man. Like I said, it don't always have to be crash out. But if you one of them niggas that talk that shit, man, you better be ready to crash out. We don't see G Perico really popping it at his enemigos. He could. We don't see it, though. We see that nigga just playing his role in these streets, doing what he's supposed to do, getting that motherfucking chili, though. So with that being said, man, we got to give G Perico an A. Real quick and swift, man. G Perico got an A for the city. Now, this last dude on the list, man. We touched on him in our Long Beach video, the most dangerous gangs in Long Beach. We coming back to Long Beach with this one. Naughty, nasty, gangsta crip. We got to do YBN in the mirror. That's right, this nigga made the list. The boy YBN, I'm sure you already know that. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm not going to bullshit, but a nigga that's really Long Beach, California. Let's be honest, nigga. I'm from North Long Beach. I'm from 2NGC. Like, bro, I, I really f over, bro. Like, nigga, do you filthy, like, really, really beat your Nigga, all that little lifting weights and all that is out. Like, that do not matter. <laughs> you can really f*** up, bro. And then shoot you in your face right after, cuz, like. And you know where this shit headed. Why be in the mirror, man? Another California implant. You know, I think he from, like, Alabama or some shit. Claiming gangster disciple to begin with. How you went time. from GD to Crip, bro? How you went from GD You're to You're talking crit. at the same time as Cuz. How you went from GD to Crip? You're talking at the same time as Cuz. Nigga, he don't... You not gonna I'm explain yourself. You Are you gonna open your mouth You're and say some dumbass shit? You not gonna I'm, answer the I'm question. I'm talking, nigga. What the fuck did you talk how about? You, I, I, how you... I'm gonna let you talk. How you went from GD to Crip? How I went from GD to Crip? It happened. There is no way on Vodou. There is no way. You joking, bro? Jesus you didn't Christ, even. There bro. is no fucking way you just said. He just admitted. It. That's already a red flag. Where did the Crippin come into place? Now again, man, we touched on Naughty Nasty in that Long Beach video. Y'all gotta watch that. Naughty Nasty Hood is not active. At Ramona Park, man, the shit was dry. Niggas wasn't hanging out. They not entrenched in no beat. Didn't have much activity. So, already, man, when your hood is not warring, when it's not active, or if you never was a part of the war, when your hood was worn, when your hood was active, how the fuck would you learn this true cripping shit, man? When you ain't got no homies really out there pressing the line, putting it down outside, representing the set, and the, the people that is, it's not really like that, how did why be in the mirror? get to crip how did they let this nigga in I, I really don't know but this is on that same level as yellow hill with the disneyland crip disney channel crip playground crip you playing with the shit why be in the mirror 
has not caught no phase for his hood. We ain't seen him put it down for a set. We seen him at they hood day. He was he, he was present. He was outside with them niggas. That don't mean shit. It's a party. Party crip. This shit is unacceptable, man. It's this shit right here. Them niggas in Naughty Nasty should be ashamed of themselves, nigga. Ashamed of themselves for parading this nigga around their hood. That's a joke. They playing with this shit. That's why the enemies be laughing at him, man. This is the shit right here. Now, this doesn't speak for everybody in that gang. I know. Not everybody. But if this nigga at your hood day, man, it got to be addressed. I, I don't get it, man. Namir has no impact for Naughty Nasty. No activity. Reputation horrible. He gets an F for false claiming this cripping, man. For playing with this cripping. Stop with this shit, man. 20-something years old joining the gang. That's not going to cut it for this cripping. This is the current state of game banging, man, in L.A. Volume 2. Go watch Volume 1. Go fuck with the channel. We got hella shit on here, man. Follow us on Instagram. Stay tuned for Volume 3. Like, comment, and subscribe.